You're watching Study with Sudhir. This is your digital classroom. My name is T.S. Sudhir. We are looking at a chapter from Hornbill, which is the NCRT textbook for CBSC class 11 students for English. And the chapter is Discovering Tut, the saga continues. And in order to set the mood, as it were, I got this wooden carving. Now, this wooden carving is not exactly how King Tut looks. But it gives you an idea about the visual imagery of what we are talk, going to talk about. Now, why is this story so difficult to understand? A lot of students actually wrote to me saying that this is very boring. It doesn't kind of appeal to us in many ways and it's difficult to comprehend. Now, I do agree to an extent that it's not really written in the NCRT textbook in the most engaging manner, right? And I think those who are looking at NCRT textbooks need to look at content like this. But I would really suggest that you look at it as a story, a story of intrigue as to how this young ruler actually died. How did he die? Why did he die? What was the reason? In fact, I was doing some research on it and I found one article which suggested that he may have died because of malaria. So it may have been a mosquito that may have been the reason why Kung Tut died so young instead of any kind of palace conspiracy but palace conspiracies you would agree are always more interesting right uh, which is why the suspense and the mystery over his death actually continues to this day so let's read the text right uh, he was just a teenager when he died right a teenager ruler who died king tut the last heir of a powerful family that had ruled egypt and its empire for centuries he was laid to rest laden with gold and eventually forgotten since the discovery of his tomb in 1922 that is we are talking of about just about a century ago the modern world has speculated about what happened to him with murder being the most extreme possibility so no one would really be interested in a mosquito being responsible for his death but murder having been a possibility as to why he was killed as a teenager ruler now leaving his tomb for the first time in 80 years tut has undergone a ct scan that offers new clues about his life and death and provides precise data for an accurate forensic reconstruction of the boyish pharaoh pharaoh is the way it is pronounced p h a r a o h now pharaohs were rulers in ancient egypt and uh, forensic is anything that provides clues from blood skin hair or any other part of the body including fingerprints right now an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as king tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient egyptian cemetery cemetery is a large burial ground known as the valley of the kings now the valley of the kings if you see the map on the following page though it's not a very clear kind of map basically the valley of the kings would be to the south of cairo the city of Cairo and to the west of the Red Sea that is flowing in Egypt. Dark bellied clouds had scudded across the desert sky all day and now were veiling the stars in casket grey. Now, scudded across means essentially moving across swiftly, moving across rather quickly. And casket grey is a reference to the grey clouds. The stars were like jewels kept inside the casket and uh, glided. The word glided, the verb glided is essentially coming from the word glider. You know, you would have seen a glider as opposed to an aeroplane. How does a glider move? It kind of moves up and down in the sky. So that is essentially the uh, word that has been used in the next sentence. It was 6 p.m. on 5th January 2005. The world's most famous mummy glided headfirst into a CT scanner brought here to probe the lingering medical mysteries of this little understood young ruler who died more than 3300 years ago so you are trying to unravel a mystery of king tut's untimely death at a very young age all afternoon the usual line of tourists from around the world had descended into the cramped cramped as in there being there being very little space rock cut tomb some 26 feet underground to pay their respects so you get an idea and i think there have been documentaries made on the history channel on this so if it is available on youtube i'm not too sure you probably could get an idea about the visual imagery of a tomb of king tut and it was 26 feet underground 
They gazed at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber and peered at Tut's gilded face. Glided, gilded. Do not get confused with the spelling. Gilded is essentially being covered with a sheet of gold. Rock cut means made by cutting a large rock. Murals are paintings which are made on the walls and this is coming from prehistoric times. Uh, it could be on the walls of a cave, in this case on the walls of the burial chamber. chamber. The most striking feature that is Tut's gilded face of his mummy shaped outer coffin lid. Some visitors read from guidebooks in a whisper. Now why were they talking in a whisper? We will know next. Others stood silently, perhaps pondering Tut's untimely death in his late teens or wondering with a shiver if the pharaoh's curse death or misfortune falling upon those who disturbed him was really true so there was this belief you may call it superstition or generally you know beliefs passed on from generation to generation that there was the pharaoh's curse that if anyone kind of disturbed this particular burial chamber the coffin the grave there could be misfortune befalling them or even death the mummy is in very bad condition because of what Carter did in the 1920s, 1922 to be precise. Zed Zahi Hawa, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. Antiquities coming from the word antique, antiquity, antiquities. Essentially referring to something which is very, very old. As he leaned over the body for a long first look. So it's almost being written in a mystery novel kind of a format. Carter, that is Howard Carter, was the British archaeologist who in 1922 discovered Tut's tomb after years of futile searching. Its contents, though has hastily ransacked in antiquity, were surprisingly complete. They remain the richest royal collection ever found and have become part of the pharaoh's legend. So you realize the amount of valuables that were there inside King Tut's grave. Stunning artifacts in gold, their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection, caused a sensation at the time of the discovery. Now, resurrection essentially means restoration to life, right? Uh, it caused a sensation at the time of the discovery and still get the most attention. But Tut was also buried with everyday things that he would want in his afterlife. And this is an interesting part, the kind of things that he was buried with. Board games, a bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine because essentially people believed and we will read that a little later on in the chapter people believed that there was something called afterlife and they could actually carry whatever they owned and earned in this life to their afterlife after months of carefully recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures that is treasures which were the valuable things with which the king was buried Carter began investigating his three nested coffins. Now, these three nested coffins is very interesting. Three nested coffins are essentially placed one inside the other. And I'm putting this photograph on, your, uh, on the screen. And they are in order of decreasing size. The innermost coffin housed the body of the king. And I did a Google search and I found that it weighed about 110 kg. Opening the first, he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves, wild celery, lotus petals and cornflowers, uh, the faded evidence of a burial in March or April. Now, celery is a marshland plant, uh, shroud is a cloth in which the dead body is wrapped and garlands of willow essentially is a reference to the wreath that you will have seen, the round shaped thing with leaves and flowers put on it which dignitaries put whenever anyone passes away that is placed over a dead body which consists of flowers and leaves when he finally reached the mummy though he ran into trouble the ritual resins had hardened which had which were used to bury him inside that coffin and that had cemented king tut to the bottom of his gold coffin and no amount of legitimate force could move them carter wrote later and asked what was to be done the sun can beat down like a hammer this far south of Egypt, right? So Carter used that sun, the harshness of the sun, in order to loosen the resins. For several hours, he set the mummy outside in blazing sunshine that heated it to 149 degrees Fahrenheit, but nothing budged. He reported with scientific detachment that the consolidated material had to be chiseled away 
from beneath the limbs and trunk before it was possible to raise the king's remain. So even with that harsh sunlight, nothing really changed. So he then reported to his seniors, to his superiors, that the consolidated material and the scientific detachment is an interesting phrase used that, you know, he's not getting emotionally attached to whatever he was seeing in front of him, right? He wanted it to be removed, right? So in order to be able to do that, he had to kind of chisel away at the portion below the limbs and the trunk. In his defense, Carter actually had little choice. So Carter is kind of not really liked in Egypt for whatever he did. But the belief is that if he had not cut the mummy free, thieves would certainly have circumvented. Circumvented essentially means finding a way around the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold. So they would have actually stolen the gold valuables that were part of the coffin. In Tut's time, the royals were fabulously wealthy, the point that I just mentioned, and they thought or hoped that they could actually take their riches with them. For his journey to the great beyond, King Tut was lavished with glittering gold, glittering goods, precious collars, inlaid necklaces and bracelets, rings, amulets, and the now iconic inner coffin and mask, all of pure gold. And you can see that photograph on the screen. Now, to separate Tut from all these valuable adornments, Carter's men removed the mummy's head and severed nearly every major joint. So, I mean, the body was literally taken apart. Once they had finished, they reassembled the remains on a layer of sand in a wooden box with padding that concealed the damage. The bed where Tut now rests. So, there was some amount of damage that apparently had occurred, but they tried to kind of repair the damage by assembling the body together in this manner. These details, the, the key to getting marks in this particular chapter questions is details, in remembering the details. So when you prepare notes of this chapter, please ensure that in point format, you are able to write the keywords so that you can recall it. And that's what is going to be important from an examination point of view. Archaeology has changed trust substantially in the intervening decades, focusing less on treasure and more on the fascinating details of life and the intriguing mysteries of death, right? So at one time, the focus was all on the gold inside, the valuables inside, the treasure inside. But now later on, it has kind of focused more on the life and how he actually died. It also uses more sophisticated tools, including medical technology. In, 1860, in 1968, more than 40 years after Carter's discovery, an anatomy professor decided to x-ray the mummy. Now, that's something very strange because x-ray or CT scan is usually done on living human beings. But here is a mummy which is being x-rayed. And that x-ray revealed a very startling fact. And that shocked the world community because beneath the resin that cakes his chest, his breastbone and front ribs were actually missing. That his breastbone and front ribs were missing and that really shocked because King Tut's grave and the coffin and the mummy were really valuable from an historical and an archaeological point of view. Today, diagnostic imaging can be done with computed tomography, CT scan. Now, tomography is a technique for displaying a representation of a cross-section through a human body or other solid object in using X-rays or ultrasound. So, a CT scan gives you a three-dimensional image, whereas an X-ray will give you only a 2D image. Now, by which hundreds of X-rays in cross-section are put together like slices of bread to create a three-dimensional virtual body. Now, what more would a CT scan reveal of Tut than the X-ray? Could it answer two of the biggest questions still lingering about him? How did he die and how old was he at the time of his death? Now, those were really big questions that deserved an answer. Now, King Tut's demise, the chapter reads, was a big event even by royal standards because he was the last in his family line and you need to know the history. His funeral was the death rattle of a dynasty. Rattle as in something which is kind of making a lot of noise. Basically, you say, no, you get rattled by it. You get shocked. You get extremely surprised by it. That is the word rattle. And rattle is also something which is used as a toy for each little infants. You know, you play a rattle in order to attract the attention of the infant. But the particulars of his passing away and its aftermath 
are unclear. We do not know what happened after he passed away, what happened to the dynasty, though the belief is that it came to an end. Amenhotep III, Tut's father or grandfather, was a powerful pharaoh who ruled for almost four decades at the height of the 18th dynasty's golden age. His son Amenhotep IV succeeded him and initiated one of the strangest periods in the history of ancient Egypt. You may find it a little boring, but trust me, you need to know some of these facts. The new pharaoh promoted the worship of the Aten, the sun disk, changed his name to Aken, Akenaten or servant of the Aten and moved the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akitaten, now known as Amarna. He further shocked the country by attacking Amun, a major god, smashing his images and closing his temples. So this is significant because of what happens later. right? It must have been a horrific time, says, said Ray Johnson, director of the University of Chicago's research center in Luxor, the site of ancient Thebes. The family that ruled for centuries was coming to an end and then Akhenaten went a little wacky. Now, sometimes a question comes about Akhenaten. So, you need to know a few of these historical facts, basically to know the facts which you can write in your answer straight away. Now, after Akhenaten's death, a mysterious, mysterious ruler named Smenkare appeared briefly. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I really don't know. I mean, these pronunciations can actually differ from person to person and exited with hardly a trace. And then a very young Tutankhaten took the throne, King Tut, as he is widely known today and about him is what we are reading. And it is because of not more, much more about his life, but because of how he died, the mystery over his death is what keeps his memory alive in that sense. The boy king soon changed his name to Tutankhamun, the living, living image of Amun. Now, it's a contrast to his predecessors. It's a contrast to his predecessor that he changed his name and oversaw a restoration of the old ways. So it was almost doing a penance of kind, you know, uh, doing damage control. He reigned for about nine years and then died unexpectedly. Regardless of his fame and the speculations about his fate, Tut is one mummy among many in Egypt. If you go to the pyramids in Egypt, etc., you will find that. How many? No one knows. The Egyptian mummy project, which began in inventory in late 2003, has recorded almost 600 mummies so far and is still counting. The next phase, scanning the mummies with a portable CT machine, was donated by the National Geographic Society and Siemens, which had manufactured the CT machine. King Tut is one of the mummies to be scanned in death as in life, moving regally ahead of his countrymen. So it's very interesting that even in death, as a mummy, he got the pride of place because people were very curious to know the history of this particular mummy in Egypt. A CT machine scanned the mummy from head to toe, creating 1,700 digital X-ray images in cross-section. Tut's head scanned in 0.62 millimeter slices to register its intricate structures takes on eerie detail. Eerie is something which is a little spooky, right? As in horror films, right? You say, you know, it was an eerie silence, you know, something which is almost very scary in the resulting image. The Tut's entire body similarly recorded a team of specialists in radiology, forensics and anatomy, anatomy began to probe the secrets that the winged goddesses of a gilded burial shrine protected for so long. So for centuries together, right, the winged goddesses which were there in the burial cham chamber had protected. Now it was being laid bare inside a city machine. Modernity trying to unearth the secrets of history, right? You understand the connection that is being made. The night of the scan, workmen carried Tut from the tomb in, a bo in his box, like Paul bearers, like you do know, in a palki mein utha ke le jate hain. They climbed a ramp and a flight of stairs into the swirling sand outside, like carrying a palanquin of sorts, right? And then rose on a hydraulic lift into the trailer that held the scanner. So, from inside being brought outside. You see the kind of, you know, you're trying to unravel the mystery. And as you are unraveling the mystery, 
one by one the layers are coming out you are being brought back to the surface where you actually rolled at one point in time several centuries ago several decades ago 20 minutes later two men emerged sprinted for an office nearby and returned with a pair of white plastic fans this bit is interesting and that can come as a short question the million dollar scanner had quit because of sand in a cooler fan now the scanner that had actually cost million of millions of dollars had quit had stopped working because the cooler fan had accumulated sand curse of the pharaoh joked the guard nervously he was joking but he was also nervous about cracking that joke right so you see that fear element and he says curse of the pharaoh which we referred to earlier right eventually the substitute fans worked well to finish the procedure after checking that no data had been lost so that the earlier part is also a reference to the superstition right after checking that the no data had been lost the technicians turned to over to the workmen who carried him back to his tomb so the procedure was completed it's almost like you're a patient you are taken inside the operation theater to the ct machine right and taken back to the icu taken back to your bed taken back to his resting place right less than three hours after he was removed from his coffin the pharaoh again rested in peace where the funerary priest had laid him so long ago we always say rest in peace but in this case king tut did not quite rest in peace he was taken out on more than one occasion back in the trailer a technician pulled up astonishing images of tut on a computer screen a gray head took shape from a scattering of pixels and the technician spun and tilted it in every direction in order to get an idea an accurate and a detailed idea neck vertebrae appeared as clearly clearly as in an anatomy class this bit is interesting important from an examination point of view this paragraph you need to know the contents in order to be able to answer it in the examination other images revealed a hand several views of the rib cage and a transection of the skull but for now the pressure was off sitting back in his chair zahi hawa smiled visibly relieved that nothing had gone seriously wrong so something may have gone wrong something minor may have gone wrong but he believed that nothing major had gone seriously wrong i did not sleep last night not for a second i was so worried but now i think i will go and sleep which means that the earlier indication which had come from the x-ray from the uh, anatomy professor which revealed that his breastbone and the front ribs were missing was not true now by the time we left the trailer descending metal stairs to the sandy ground the wind had stopped the winter air lay cold and still like death itself in this valley of the departed the valley of the kings where the king's final resting place was located and you see it's as if some bit of the mystery had been resolved we do not know yet but at least some kind of fog had been moved out right so now the wind had stopped even the atmosphere is kind of conveying that kind of an impression and just above the entrance to tut's tomb stood orion orion is the constellation right for students uh, who would be interested in astronomy in fact my project in class 12 uh, was on astronomy my physics project and orion was one star one constellation of stars we would always be asked to kind of identify locate and then draw in our different maps over a period of time we had to do that anyway many many years ago the constellation that the ancient egyptians knew as the soul of osiris the god of the afterlife watching over the boy king the boy king you should use this phrase when you're talking about king tut so basically the constellation orion is associated with the legend of osiris the god of afterlife so it's almost like a guardian angel looking after the boy king king tut now some of the questions that come in this particular uh, chapter are about how did he die what was his body mummy subjected to what were the results of the ct scan you do not really need to do major analysis except the little that I have told you in this explanation, but basically rely on facts. Facts is what you should not get mixed upon. Uh, you uh, get confused. 
you there are a couple of names which are a little different difficult to kind of remember so ensure that you write the spelling a few times on a piece of paper so that you kind of get the hang of it also uh, what was the reason why ct scan was preferred why was it done what were the results of what carter did what were the difficulties that he encountered in actually getting the mummy out of the tomb what were the superstitions and the fear and the apprehensions associated with the pharaoh what was the curse of the pharaohs all those kind of questions are what you need to prepare yourself for in order to be able to answer the questions in the examination closer to the examination we will do a detailed discussion about different kind of questions but at this point of time i do hope you have managed to kind of I managed to simplify the chapter to an extent I hope I hope I have managed to get you interested to an extent in this chapter don't get overawed just read it as a story a story in which there are lots of facts and as I said if you read it like the story of the suspense of the death of a young king the boy king you may just be able to kind of associate a little more interest with this particular chapter thank you very much for watching